Hi everyone, I'm Alessandro, welcome back to Mr. Reason Art, and today I'm going to talk about five things which I think are really important uh, for you to know to improve as an artist. So subscribe, leave a like, and let's go! So the first thing is, you are going to make mistakes, and that's okay, as long as you admit them uh, to yourself. One thing that I like to think about is that a blank piece of paper can be one of the scariest things that an, art, an artist can encounter because uh, there you have an infinite amount of possibilities for your drawings, including an infinite amount of possibilities for your mistakes. So you are going to make lots of mistakes uh, drawing things that you already know how to draw and, also, and, sp and especially when you're learning uh, something new. And there's no problem in that. Uh, you can always take a step back and correct your mistakes. And if you cannot do that, you can learn from them. You can try to realize what are the mistakes and the reason why you made them. For example, I was just too anxious, so I uh, rushed up some lines and everything became messy. Or I mixed up some colors and they, now they are completely wrong. So I need to study a little bit more about color theory and things like that. But the problem uh, happens when you start uh, create you start to create excuses and to lie to yourself. For for example, if I have uh, th that happens a lot when people uh, draw things like flowers and trees and that kind of organic shapes. Uh, and an example, uh, I have a flower here in front of me, uh, I want to draw this flower specifically, specifically and in a precise way. So then when I finish my drawing, I look at it and I see that some proportions, proportions are not correct, some form, forms are uh, kind of altered, they're not the same, and then, but at the end, the drawing is okay, it is a good drawing, but I know that it's not exactly what I wanted to draw. And then I start to create excuses like, uh, oh yeah, but flowers, they have, uh, there's a great variety of forms and colors and whatever. But you need to ask yourself if you were trying to draw that specific flower that you're seeing, or if you, if you wanted to change the forms and the proportions as you did. So one thing is intentional, the other one is just an excuse uh, because you made mistakes. So that's when you have a problem, especially because if you start drawing things which are more complicated, such as the, the human face, there are some uh, features, some characteristics that you cannot uh, uh, change too much. Because the person is going to be, you won't recognize that person anymore, or you're going to have a completely uh, weird uh, face or something like that. So that's the problem when you're lying to yourself. So there's no problem in making mistakes. So learn from them and don't worry too much about it. But just don't lie to yourself. So now the second thing, uh, which is related to the first one is uh, learn how to deal uh, with your uh, frustration. So frustration can be good and bad. So the good aspect about frustration is that you are frustrated because of something. Uh, the shadows here in my drawings, they're not as good as I wanted uh, them to be. Or uh, whatever, uh, the, the, the forms, I need to study more uh, forms in space. So if you get frustrated with uh, some of your drawings, that can be a, a really good thing because you know that you are making mistakes that's why you're frustrated because things are not the way that you want them to be and you know that you need to improve so it's a lot better than uh, you don't get frustrated at all and you think that everything that you do is perfect and that you don't uh, you don't have uh, more room for improvement that's uh, that's a really bad thing so that's the good aspect about frustration. You are aware of yourself and you are aware of what is happening. And maybe sometimes you'll need uh, the help of a professional, but you know, you know that you need to be better. Basically, uh, uh, that's the good thing. And the bad thing is when you are frustrated all of the time because you're trying to do things that you are not able now uh, to, uh, to do or 
whatever uh, is the reason so if you're getting frustrated all of the time one thing that you should do is uh, take a step back and go to your comfort zone so you can remind yourself that the things that you can do that are now in your comfort zone they were not like that you need you needed to learn them so now they are in your comfort zone so now you need to do that same thing again for uh, the things which are in the next level let's say so that's the bad aspect about frustration don't be frustrated uh, uh, all the time always take a step back uh, remember that you can get better and maybe you need some more time just don't be frustrated all, all of the time because you lose a motivation and if you stop drawing uh, if you're all if, if you're always drawing and when you stop doing that you are always frustrated it's kind of difficult to get back uh, to drawing again so in the next day you might you might be thinking something oh yesterday was so bad so today i don't want to do that so if you're doing that if things are not really good if you're getting frustrated go back a little bit to your comfort zone and stay in a more uh let's say calm uh, state of mind or something like that so now the third thing is uh you can study many subjects in parallel uh what i mean by that for example you don't need to finish a uh, course on human anatomy to start studying about color theory you can do both things in parallel and while while you do that you might even relate those two subjects uh, more easily because in art you can relate uh, basically all of the subjects uh, with each other and there are some uh, things that you need to know before uh, going to others for example you cannot study about uh, light and shadow if you don't know about uh, form and space so you need to know how a form behaves in space so you can apply shadow and light to it uh, correctly but many other subjects they are not like that and when you study things in parallel uh, some things you might uh, how can I say you won't be 100% of your time focused on only one subject so you won't be let's say uh, fed up uh, with uh, only one thing you won't burn out of studying too much only one thing so you just uh, change your focus so you can relax a little bit from uh, the first subject and then when you can when you come back to, uh, to that again you'll be let's say more um, with your head a little bit more uh, fresh to start studying uh, it again so remember you can study more than one thing in parallel and that's uh, quite uh, good actually so now the fourth thing so learn and study about theory and draw from observation and imagination so theory is really important because that gives us the basis of everything how to relate colors what certain uh, things mean or how to do this or that uh, so basically theory is uh, the basis so don't misunderstand uh, the idea of learning theory with losing your own style it doesn't mean that you need to follow every aspect of uh, theory it doesn't mean that you cannot create new things it just means that you you will know more so uh, you can improve your style you can get uh, things uh, better or if you think your style is just uh, 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 at its maximum you you don't need to do anything so the more you know about theory the better It's just like a musician the more you know about harmony and melody uh, the easier uh, it's going to be for you to play different rhythms it's a lot better than having a mu musician that only knows how to play one thing because he only knows one uh, uh, thing so uh, that's it and um, uh, observational drawing is really important because that's where we come up with things so uh, for example light and shadow uh, theory we know about uh, we know about that because we observe things and we see how they behave so observational drawing is what uh, basically teach uh, teaches us how things uh, are uh, so if you want to draw the human body you need to know what is a human body so you need to observe a human body or if you want to draw a car you know you need to know what is a car so we need to observe that and now um, 
Drawing from, from imagination is uh, also really important and many people don't talk about that. They only talk about observational drawing. So drawing from imagination is actually really good because you can draw something and then you can compare to uh, the real thing, for example. I if I want to draw someone giving a high kick or something like that, a, a character which is kicking, so I can uh, try uh, to do my way, I do once and then I correct some mistakes and, and do a second time, third time, I don't know, eight times and I see that I'm not getting better, so now I go to observational drawing, I, I, I try to find a picture or someone doing that uh, pose or uh, whatever, and then I compare my drawing from imagination and then I know, uh, I will know better what are my mistakes so I can improve a lot uh, faster, at least uh, in, in my case. And when you're drawing from imagination, it's also a way to test yourself if you really know something. You can say that you really know about something when you can draw or paint without having a reference. It doesn't mean that you uh, don't need to use references, they are really good for you to learn, but you can uh, test yourself by drawing from imagination and also uh, try many uh, times before going back and looking again at a reference to see what are your uh, main mistakes. So that's quite a, a good workout uh, for your brain actually. Alright, and now the fifth uh, thing, which is the last one. Uh, try to practice and study every day. So the more you study uh, and practice, the better you're gonna be. Uh, that's basically uh, the rule, unless you're starting to get stressed out and then you need to uh, hit the brakes <laughs> and stop a little bit. But uh, many times we, we just cannot stop to draw and watch the video about the subject. So one thing that you can do is the same practice that we have in observational drawing. As uh, many uh, great artists uh, say, 70% uh, of the observational drawing is just observation and the other 30% or even less is actual uh, drawing. So one thing that you can do when you cannot stop to draw, you can observe what's around you. For example, if you are in a waiting room, you see some chairs, try to observe what's the color of the light, what's the color of the, the chairs, how does it interact, how uh, the shadows are being formed and everything uh, and everything else. Try to create a map on how uh, would you draw that thing that you're seeing in your head. So observe a lot, that's a way to practice when you just cannot uh, sit down and draw uh, and actually draw. Alright, so that's it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I hope those five tips were helpful or at least somewhat uh, clarifying to you. Uh, remember to leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you're not already, uh, follow me on Instagram at mr.weasel.art, uh, check out my other videos and if you have any questions or suggestions you can comment uh, down below. And that's it for today, see you next time, bye!